Hi everyone, this is Yvonne here. I've been wanting to give you a personal message um, in the last couple of weeks before I go live on Facebook. But time is literally ticking away, so I've had to do this video that I'm sharing with you now. You may or may not have heard already, because I know the word is out there, but on the 7th of October, I started my first round of chemotherapy. About a week before that, I was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer that has already metastasized to my liver. There's no cure for this cancer, but with the help of great science and a great healthcare team, I will be able to survive for many more years to come through the use of chemotherapy drugs and other lifestyle changes. I know this might come as a shock, um, it's come to as a shock for a lot of people. My hair has just started to fall out today, so my hair's not going to look like this anymore. Funnily enough, I'm actually liking my hair at the moment. So the regimen was for my chemotherapy to have three weeks on, one week off. So last Thursday was meant to be my third week, but I couldn't be given chemotherapy because my platelet count was too low. So the regimen is now changing to two weeks on and one week off. Um, the median life span, lifespan, survival rate for people taking the chemotherapy I'm given, which is a combination of gemcetabine, which Russell had for his pancreatic cancer four years ago, and also abraxane, which is a drug they use for pancreatic cancer. I'm tolerating it really well at the moment, but before they administer the IV um, steroids, sorry, I'm going to just settle this. Um, before they administer it, they give me IV steroids. Now, the IV steroids are meant to stop the nausea and vomiting, and in that regard, they have been working. However, um, it's become aware to my loved ones that it's also, I'm also reacting and appears that I have established some sort of mania from the steroids. So my family and friends who love me dearly are helping me with to get, to get assistance with that. Um, because I want to be the old Yvonne, not the steroid induced Yvonne. I'm feeling really well. I do get a little bit of pain and the oncologist has provided me with the right medication that we're working on. The pain is sometimes in my abdomen, sometimes around my back. You might be wondering how this, how I got diagnosed or how I caught this. Um, about three weeks ago, my daughter Lauren and her husband Dave and our beautiful granddaughter Isabel, who's now five months old, were coming up to, from Tasmania for two weeks holiday. And for the three days before that, I felt like I had, I had a pain in the form of probably a stitch in my right side. Sometimes that would go, it wasn't an unbearable pain. Sometimes I would have a pain in my back. But I noticed it was different from muscular pain that I normally um, have, etc. And I had a nap one afternoon. I was probably a little bit tired. I had a nap and when I woke up, the pain was still there, which was unusual for me because if I do have little aches, niggly aches and pains, usually a rest fixes them up for a while. And when I woke up, I thought, oh, that pain's still there. Now, I've had a couple of friends who have told me that they had appendicitis and the pain wasn't as bad as they expected it would be. Other people have said it was excruciating. So in my mind, I'm thinking... Maybe I've got appendicitis. And because my family were arriving, I thought the last thing I want is for me to have a burst appendix. I need to get this sorted. So Russell came with me to my GP appointment. And going into the GP, I had pain in my back, but none in my abdomen area. When I um, went in for my consultation, she said to show her where the pain is. And I said, well, at the moment, it's around my back. And she said, I don't think it's appendicitis. It sounds more like kidney stones, which made sense to me. So she said, well, I'll send you off for two ultrasounds. You can only have 
one ultrasound a day funded through um, Medicare. So I had the first one of my back on the Monday and then I went back on the Tuesday to have the second one. The girl who, the, the radiographer or sonographer who did the, the one on the second day told me at the beginning that she would need to get her supervisor to come and check um, her imagery before she let me go. That was fine. She took all the images and then she said, I've just got to go and get my supervisor now and off she went. I thought the supervisor took a little bit longer than I was expecting to come back, but it really probably was only a couple of minutes. It wasn't long. And I was lying there thinking, I hope they haven't found anything. When she came back, she clicked her fingernail on the screen they were looking at and said to the her supervisor, I got the pan head, I mean the pan tail. That immediately rang alarm bells for me. Sorry, lipstick, still get lipstick on my teeth. Because Russell had a lesion on the tail of his pancreas. Now, if it wasn't for what I know from all the research I've done with Russell, I probably wouldn't have known what that meant. And the, the supervisor asked me a few questions and said, you have no systemic diseases or anything like that. So I knew then they had seen something that, I, that some, it rang alarm bells. So two days later, when the results went back to my GP, the report from the radiologist said that they had seen a lesion on, my, on the tail of my pancreas and multiple metastatic lesions on my liver. So I knew straight away what that meant. I knew it wasn't good. And from then on, my medical team, it was just a series of ultrasounds, PET scans, biopsies. I had my porch placement done. It's not fully healed. It did actually um, get a little bit infected. So for the last two chemotherapies, it hasn't been used until it heals properly. So I've had a cannula inserted um, where they administered the drugs. On Thursday, I had my normal appointment with the oncologist and my platelet count was too low, so I couldn't be given the chemotherapy. He said that it's not uncommon for this to happen and I will now be going to a two-week-on, one-week-off chemo regimen. The scariest thing for me is that our daughters and any future grandchildren and our existing grandchild have the prospect of having had two parents or grandparents both with pancreatic cancer. So we have already started the ball rolling to have my tumour tested genomically. The tumour testing is already underway and hopefully the results will be back in 10 days, but they can test my tumour against five world-known recognised oncology drugs. And if they find any specific mutation, they might be able to um, target the chemotherapy specifically to what I have. The other thing is that Medicare will now, um, through my oncologist and the genomics company, Medicare will fund for um, tests of our DNA for our family so that they can then consider whether they want to have genomic, um, have their genes tested for any mutations that might get picked up. I think those things are really important for me and I'm so grateful that we're able to afford to pay for that. So I'm looking forward to those results coming back. Within myself, I feel really good, apart from the little bit of pain um, little niggles just to remind me there's stuff going on in my body I probably wouldn't even know that I was sick I wouldn't didn't feel any don't really feel any different than I did before my diagnosis the thing that's been keeping me going in the last couple of weeks is the fact that our daughter Georgia has been stranded in lockdown in Melbourne for all of for almost she's suffered through almost every lockdown over 263 days and she desperately needed to get out of Melbourne. Her mental health was really taking a toll. Um, or the lockdowns were, she lives alone and she was really sick of being alone. 
So before my diagnosis, she had already applied to relocate home back to Queensland and she'd also applied to go to Tasmania on the same basis where she would settle with and live in the same town as her, in Hobart near her sister Lauren. Um, they got knocked back but then she reapplied with a priority to get them approved because of the urgency of coming home to be with her family. Tasmania accepted her first and she yesterday completed 14 days of home quarantine which was really, really difficult because again she was home for 14 days alone with no contact with anyone even though she had the most use of the most beautiful house thanks to Lauren's husband's family who let her home quarantine in their shack at Dodgers Ferry. She wasn't even allowed to leave the house to go down for a walk on the beach which at times has nobody on it. She was only allowed to look through the window. Yesterday she got her out of home quarantine. She and Georgia and Isabel are flying home tomorrow and that will be the best thing I've heard and done just to hug my family. Um, I'm so excited about tomorrow. So from tomorrow, George is going to have 10 days off work and we're just going to make it strictly family time just for me and Russell and our girls. So I hope you understand. Um, I've organised, my sister asked me a few weeks ago what I was doing for my 60th birthday on the 11th of December and I said, I want to have a party, I'd like to have a party, but with COVID, so many things have been cancelled, so many plans that I'm scared to organise anything until we get closer to the date. The birthday weekend is now the biggest event you're going to ever hear about thanks to all my family and wonderful friends who are going to be involved. It's going to be an all-weekend event from the 10th, 11th and over the 10th, 11th and 12th of December. My birthday is on the 11th of December, so the official cake cutting will happen at 2 o'clock on the Saturday, the 11th. All, the venue is at Minden, which is near Marburg, between Ipswich and Toowoomba in Queensland. The hiring of the venue, which is about 16 acres inside, includes the use of all accommodation on site, which is bedding for about 100 people in various formats, a couple of um, air-conditioned motel-style rooms, and several um, dormitory-style, backpacker-style bunk bedrooms. So I know already some of you are flying down or will require accommodation and we will be allocating that, uh, um, that accommodation to those who need it. If you can't come because you're overseas, you're welcome to join in the celebrations virtually and I will have a job for all of my friends around the world um, just doing a short recording about COVID and what it's been like because I want this COVID, this event to be a COVID-free event and everyone in attendance to be double vaxxed because there will be some immunocompromised people at the event. So I'm asking all of my Australian friends who want to come to please go out and get start getting the vaccines now so that you're double vaxxed for my party. I know this has come as a shock. I've had to resort to sending this video because as you know, I like to talk and phone calls were taking over an hour. Then I had to resort to sending text messages and I've just decided to send this blanket message now and um, to everyone that I haven't so far been in touch with. I actually mentally am so feeling so loved. I'm swimming in a sea of love. My diagnosis is really confrontational. I don't think it's really hit me yet. Um, but I will be doing updates um, through Facebook initially and um, just stay tuned there. So thank you for being one of my special friends. We have a connection for whatever reason. Um, sorry, this is a generic post that's going to all of you, but I'm sure you'll understand. Hopefully I'll see you at my birthday and if not, I'll um, hope you can join in virtually. Okay, love you guys. Bye.